Whoa, it's Woolsey. This is my old account, Dan's Woman. Welcome back to the co-op building series, Level Swap. Today we have a very special guest, Eric Van Wilderman. What's up? Yo, what's up? Happy to be here because after this video, I think I'm gonna be a professional creator. I hear it's easy to be a good creator in Geometry Dash. Is this true? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> in level swap, we both start brand new levels, but every 20 minutes we swap over. We have three turns on each level, so there are six total time slots. We're both recording, so make sure you catch the other point of view as well. I think that's all there is to know. Uh, Eric, how are you feeling about this? Pretty terrified of going into the editor. I'm not that good, but I did practice for two and a half hours before this. I moved something for the first time today. I had a spike corridor and it bounced open. Oh my Whoa. God, the easings. Whoa. All right, Eric, best of luck. Three, mm. Best of luck to you too. Two, one, go. For this level swap, I'm using Teleporter by Laps on a 218 second start off set. It has this really serene, slow like atmosphere that Eric's gonna be able to build with hopefully very easily. I don't know. I tried to pick something very mellow. I'm gonna try and make the most simple layout of all time to minimize the amount of trouble that Eric gets into because I know he's a little bit scared of this series. So, okay, but I, I can't resist just having a blue orb jump right here. I just can't resist that. I'm gonna try and keep it on the same height level so none of the gameplay goes off screen. I wanna turn into a mini cube right here and the way I'm gonna do it, instead of stacking those two portals on top of each other. I'm gonna half space this mini portal right in front of the yellow gravity portal and scale it down so you can easily see both portals right there. It's not the smoothest transition to work with going all the way around like that, but kind of like the feeling of height you get right there. It's like a leap of faith before you go into a mini cube. I shouldn't be half spacing stuff. That's gonna be a bit problematic for Eric to figure out. I don't think he knows the grid strats. <laughs> So I'm gonna try my best to keep it all on grid. There are three timed jumps right there that go into the boom, boom, boom. And for the last one, I wanna add a regular size portal right here that you jump into to make it feel a bit more climactic to end this little sequence right here, this little corridor, to then lead you into a regular gravity portal. And I'm probably gonna end it right here. I don't want it to be too long. It's made in six minutes, surprisingly. I've got a lot of time to expand on the structuring and stuff and make it a bit easier for Eric to follow. Yeah, that's good to me. We can have maybe a little floating object like here, which has invisible blocks in it, invisible spikes lying the top, and then maybe some 3D. Where even is the 3D tab? I never use this. Oh, you know what would be clever? If I put one up here and had an orb that is a fake. I'm gonna mark that with an X though. Then I'm gonna add some pulsing squares to go underneath the one by one blocks. We're gonna mix up player color one and player color two for these, cause why not? We'll flip it for each one, so it starts off with a different player color each time. It's looking nice and clean so far. I'm gonna extend the length of some of these objects. So we have a mix of floating objects and a mix of pillars. I'm gonna set the background to a gradient on a desaturated blue. Everything else is gonna be black. The object lines are gonna be white. I shall add a block transition at the very beginning, which is gonna be randomly picked. I don't really know just by looking at them which one's which, but hey, that looks pretty cool to me. I'm gonna fix the layering a little bit by putting this orb on T1 above those blocks and putting a black glow piece behind it to make it seem like it's like popping out and leaving a shadow on top of the blocks. And uh, that should be T1 low down. I'm gonna make that group two for half opacity and I'm gonna make group one zero opacity. And I'm gonna leave a note at the top of the level for Eric just so he knows. I'm gonna put them up there, out of sight of the level, but somewhere that he'll probably find. Boom, boom, boom. I love that sink right there. It would be cool if there was a couple of background flashes here. I've made three background pulses. I'm gonna add some more text to let them know that they copy whatever color the background is. As you can see, they just have a bit of brightness added every time. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, awesome. It has been 20 minutes. Holy <laughs> shit, I just talked through a bunch and I was muted. <laughs> I need some clarification on yeah. one thing. When you put down a J block, like yep. for the for the wave to slide on it. Use a D block. D block! Whenever the wave's hitbox is in the D hitbox, it will slide. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, you might have to clean up the gameplay at the end. Oh my god! Alright, I'll give you the ID. That's a disaster. Oh no. You know what? This uh, is... I, I actually made an impossible level. Amazing. Impossible! 
As you it's say. possible. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's possible. You still gotta clean up the gameplay. Right. It's oh, possible okay. now, right. dude. You're gonna get to mine and be like, what kind of monster makes <laughs> gameplay like this? In that quest for music sync, it could be a little weird. Dude, Hope why'd you call it bald? <laughs> you know that I have a you know that I have a full head of hair underneath this hat, right? This game needs a level called bald that's rated that has uh like that the pictures of me in it, like from the EVW NCP. <gasps> Dude, you almost won a ten. Dude, yours is like already shiny. God, look at how beautiful there's 3D. <laughs> I don't even know if I use the right blocks for the oh. wave like to decorate it. Uh oh, I I'm gonna expose you. I'm gonna turn on show hitboxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so some of the slopes and the wave are placed backwards. All right, best of luck, man. Yeah, you too. So first things first, we need to set the tone. We need to change the background. We need to change, you know, the whole setting. I think a purple is going to be all right for this. I think I'm just going to make a background for this that moves up with the player. We're going to put a big shiny object. We're going to turn off its rotation. I'm going to make it a purple blending. We're going to have to turn down the opacity because I want to have a lot of layers to this. So we've got a moving group three, which is going to lock pretty much immediately to the x-axis for the whole duration. So that has three. It's going to have a unique group four. Then starting with a new editor layer, I'm just going to start copy pasting these and adding a new group. Getting rid of the old one, adding a new group for every single one that we copy paste. So I've stacked a lot of low opacity objects on top of each other. If I get the hue slider up on the screen and change it up and down, you can see the impact this has. I'm just going to level this to something that I like. I'm probably going to put it right here and start setting up a rotation with that group four. It doesn't need a center because it, it's going to be its own center essentially. So we're going to make a three second rotation, 45 degrees, which is going to rotate it exactly one spoke, I believe. We're going to copy this rotation for every single group. Four is going to be the group parent, which means any rotation or scale or anything like that, a group group action is going to have its center be around four instead of calculating the center of those objects. I'm going to stagger these rotations by just rotating them. I can easily change this in the future. In fact, I'm going to change the move time down just a little bit so you can hopefully see what's happening a bit more clearly. So when I play test this, you should see it blurs and then it reforms at that point. Now we need to make group three, the moving group, move up with the player roughly. So I'm going to put an ease in out for about four seconds and I'm going to test a value of 80. So this should start moving up through the ship section. It's a bit strange. Uh, a problem is that it's not actually rotating at all. I want to add this to a new group 24, which has a constant rotation. For about 12 seconds, that's how long the level is. And we're going to make it rotate, I guess, 180. It's going to slightly rotate all the way around. And it locks right there, which is pretty much perfect. So we got the right numbers straight away. I want to add some pulses for this for each layer. So it gradually gains some color, gets a bit of spice. Again, same process is happening. Copy pasting, incrementing the group by one. Now I'm just playing with fade time so some of this is probably going to get cut out, but I'm just tweaking it so that it happens in the most climactic way possible. Okay, I'm just going to have to leave that as it is, even if it's a bit underwhelming. i got to get some pulses put in really quickly. 0 0.05 and 0 0.5 with the plus 0.14. Not climactic enough. It needs to be like 0.28 maybe. Perfect. That's cool, right? Okay, I feel like I've done something. I did one thing and I uh -huh. thought it was gonna look kind of cool. I think the level looks like a candy cane now. I was like, hey, the whole red and white theme, you know? Like, I, I see what Woolsey was going for. So let's change some more of it to red and white. I had an idea. It didn't work as well as I wanted it to. With me at the helm, there's gonna be nothing to worry about. <laughs> Wait, did you upload it publicly? <laughs> Someone in the world just played ball two. And it's just like this <laughs> random candy cane level. It was like, hey, what the hell is this? Oh my god he's yo i mean it's it's not that good looking but it's like i think passable hey, it works. you know it works dude i like the background the thing spinning that's pretty cool yeah i couldn't figure out how to cover up the hole because those objects oh, like, they're not connected see, all yeah. the way through well you know what i think i'm gonna fill that hole with something that sounds <laughs> weird dude <laughs> that sounds so bad I, I caught myself. you can't make it up i know you can't <laughs> oh my god. Good luck once again. Okay, so none of these are placed on a different editor layer, which is strange. I'm gonna quickly just clean this up with select filter and move it to editor layer one so I can differentiate between blocks and Eric's like candy cane thing. It doesn't sit right in my mind that Eric made this. Okay, anyway, we are going to place some glow objects above them once I turn off select filter on about 1.5 scale. I want them to be black blending so that initially they're gonna be invisible. Editor layer two. Alrighty. I am going to start giving these groups. Okay, I'm going to quickly just clean up some of the layering. Candy cane objects can go to the top of B2 now. Now I can use B1 
for these glow objects. And that's going to give me a lot of space on T1 and T2 and T3, for that matter, to make some... Wait, why is that? Okay. So he's used... Six and seven for the groups, but there's no three. Okay, fine. So I'm making pulse triggers, which are going to be on a 0 0.05 and a 0 0.5, going to a slightly light red. Okay, 13 is the max. So these pulses are going to go all the way to 13. They're going to repeat themselves as soon as they end. So right there, there we go. So we have a looping glow effect on top of those objects. I'm not going to place them all in yet because it's going to be a bit tedious. I want to get as many ideas into this level as possible before it's too late. I'm going to add some overlay design slash effect to some of these blocks. And that's going to involve a right angle triangle, which is going to be made in a 4x2 pattern like that. I'm actually going to make it down here. Okay, so next free group is 14. This is going to be on black, which I set to 9. On the next edit to lay up, we're going to put little circles on 0.75 scale. They need groups as well. They're going to be on the top of T1. So it's going to be 15, 16 in the bottom right, and then 17 is the bottom left. Next edit to lay up, we are going to connect these with 3D lines. Not real lines, because I don't want these to kill the player, obviously. So the line at the right is group 18. The line on the bottom is group 19. And then I'm going to have a 3D line at the top, just up here, which is going to be on 20. And that will complete the triangle. Then I'm going to copy paste this, scale it to 1.25, I think. Put it on a new editor layer, just in case. Remove all of those, give it a new 21. And I need to shift this into place. I'm going to repeat that again on 1.5 using editor layer 7 another new group 22 final layer number 8 using group 23 we're going to center this again got to make sure all of these are alphaed off at the very beginning starting with 14 then we'll go all the way down to 23 so we're going to start alphaing each group on one by one with 0.1 fade time oh wait 14 is not first okay 15 is going to be first it's a weird way of doing things but it's going to be fine I'm going to half space these three triggers away from each other, just like that. So it's going to very quickly show these three dots, just like that. When I play test it, you can see they appear one after the other. Then with one block gap between, it's going to go 18, 19, 20. So these lines appear in between. Then the block after, 14 is going to fade on. So the outline appears and then the black part in the middle fades on. 21, 22 and 23 are all going to be one block apart. Okay, so I've got this on a 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to red. I think that's going to be cool when the player crosses it, right? I'm going to enable link controls for this object. So wherever I place it, one click and everything is selected. I've got everything selected, including the triggers. I'm going to copy paste this around and build helper. So every single time I press that button, it's assigning a new group ID to all of the triggers in a consistent way with the object. Oh, I forgot it. Oh, God damn it. I've taken such an L. I'm having to undo literally everything because when I was copy pasting and build helpering, I forgot to select the triggers at the very bottom down here, which makes them all invisible first. Okay, I think I might have done something cool here. I think it's a nice detail to have on top of the blocks. I mean, there's not much depth created with it because it's literally just sitting on top. Okay, with that done, I'm probably just going to get set with the rest of the pulses in this part that we started way at the beginning of this round. Hello. Oh God, <laughs> dude, that was so quick. I didn't really add much. I added two things. One of them is completely unnecessary, but... It's still there! <laughs> dude, mine's still there. Is it? <laughs> I think. Let's see how this levels. Dude, that looks baller. And the lights, the way they pulse and light up look way better on the blocks, yeah. I put glow on that top. Is... Oh, I see the logo. Yo! This is the point where I get to now, where I'm like, it looks so good, what do I add? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas right. this one... <laughs> I'll try my hardest. Okay, quick emergency fix for Eric. 25, and then this is going to be 26. Make sure the center has the moving group, actually. 26, 25. There we go. So it's now rotating around the middle. Let's go. A tactic is to delete the ground spikes that he placed in put in my own object. I can easily just add a massive area under here. It's kind of ambitious. I want to cut it off. I did not mean for it to look like that. It was supposed to just stay the exact same color as the background, so it hides it. But that actually looked pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. That is going to work. You know what's cool? I can take that and add it to background blending on a low opacity in between the blocks. So we have some slightly lighter glow in between and then 
we have some decent like solid glow that's cutting off the blocks with a hue change so it's more pink up the top oh so i set that to base red blending which i used for eric's heart because he used player color too and it was looking orange gonna add some of that blurry glow from down the bottom onto the portals and orbs i'm probably gonna experiment a little bit with the structuring here by having a bit of scaling involved and i can probably be cheeky and like reuse that at a certain point and then just extend this block upwards Ooh, i gave these saws red bases just like the square over here so we're linking decoration i'm gonna add a massive black circle behind these saws which is something i've done before but i think it's gonna work well in this scenario maybe that just looks kind of off though what if i add it on low opacity yeah that's a lot better oh we could definitely just have like straight up red blocks as long as they have that pulsing group 27 on them it should work pretty well yeah i like that even if it's really simple right where these object pulses start i'm gonna add a color trigger for the object on a quite a high fade time and it's gonna change the opacity down to 40 percent because when i was going up this staircase the objects were blocking the background hard and i couldn't really get it to work it's looking all right. It just needs to be a bit quicker in and out. Uh, I haven't done too much this round. I don't know. I'm finding it quite difficult to work with such elevation. I always say in my videos, I try and keep the gameplay as straight as possible because it's just so much easier to structure and stuff. Oh maybe. my God, I did the thing. I was talking. <laughs> did the thing. I don't know. Maybe like you'll make it look better. I mean, I guess that is the whole point. <laughs> so I suppose. Good luck. Yeah. Oh. You've already said good luck to me. That's not a good sign, is it? So the thing I was going for, for bald, is I figured because it was kind of candy cane-ish, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to try to change it into like a wintry kind of feel. And oh the song God. is very wintry too, right? So I put a bunch oh. of white stuff on the bottom to make it look like oh it was snow. Oh my God. Snow, but Dude, you're good. I'm excited. I'm so happy. This is my this is my last time with the Wilderman. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's nice because I started with this, so I'm like the fifth, and then you're the last. So then, like, if it ends up at the end, it's been, oh, Wolsey! My like, fault. Like, oh, smooth, Eric. Very smooth. I gotta polish a couple of things, like the block transitions and stuff, but. I'm very hopeful with how this is about to turn out. Right now, I'm just making all of the spikes match the color of the block that it's sitting on. The red one's a bit problematic because obviously it's sitting on a block with a lot of glow. You can see a clear seam in it. Okay, cool. The spikes are looking a lot more clean now. Now I'm gonna select everything in the level, put don't fade, don't enter, turn off glow. Because in instances like this, where there's multiple spikes stacked on top of each other, the objects have a natural glow as long as you're on high detail mode in the actual game settings. I don't want it to stack and look ugly and like inconsistent with everything else. So I've turned it off. I'm going to select all of these sparkles and I'm going to make it group 74. Apparently, I don't know. Build helper kind of went crazy and added a billion groups. In the midst of all these pulses down here for the glow on top of the object, I'm going to fish out number nine because it's in the middle and I'm going to make group 74 pulse to white. So these are going to flash white every once in a while. It's looking good. I'm going to get a pulse for the background, which is going to increase the saturation by plus 0.2, and I'll probably make it a bit brighter as well. Hey, it's looking smooth. I actually really like this level. This is actually so cool. I can probably make those jumps a bit more climactic with these pulses down here. More saturation for these to fit with the other pulses, please. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, that's good. And what if, this is a massive what if, what if all of the white in the level, which is on color channel one, pulsed on a 0 0.05 and 0.5, a recurring theme in this video, to black. And the black, which is on color channel nine, might go to white. Oh, that's such a cool touch from Eric. He made some of them red and some of them white around the orbs. That's sick. Dude, Eric is better than he gives himself credit for. We've got to add something else on top, I think. Also, I'm noticing that these objects are just off by one pixel or so next to the blocks. I'm going to select filter these and just correct that alignment. Okay, this is looking good. Like, on a freeze frame, this looks nuts. On editor layer 10, we are going to be using probably black blending on a huge screen like this, which is going to go on group 75. Don't fade, don't enter. T3 all the way up at the top, and it's going to lock on pretty soon when you get into the level. 75, that might be the biggest group I've used in a level swap, not gonna lie. Then 75 can pulse to a lower version of the background, maybe? To give a more clear example, this is what happens when it's on quite a high brightness. That looks sick in my opinion. So, 
I am going to align this with the other pulses that we added for the white and black ones. Put it pretty much in line just with longer fade times. There we go. That is a much better way to do pulses and that kind of hides the white and black inversion and makes it a cooler detail. Yes, dude. Okay, I'm happy with this. Oh, okay. Now I'm noticing that on a pulse, these pulsing objects are showing above the snow, which is not how it should go. Let me just layer these on B4. I could definitely make those a bit more interesting now that I think of it. Let's have, this is group 76. Another one is group 77 and 78. I'm going to make them wobble a bit, like 4 and 2 for 76 on one second, and it can just go back that. So hopefully in normal mode, you notice that it's looking a little bit blurry underneath the block. It's not as blurry as I would have liked, but you can clearly see that there's three layers to it. I wonder if I can do that with low opacity orbs. It should barely be noticeable, but yeah, that looks cool to me. Nice. I'm going to take these pulsing squares and add them to the tops of the blocks for a bit of pillar decoration, just to be used up above and around these structures to fill in a little bit of space that is certainly what? time oh my goodness so i did my best the wave part looks at least like okay but i <laughs> the very beginning i think the gameplay still needs like touching up dude this level looks sick the way it's like Actually, pulsing really like it, it's yeah. it looks like a night sky like kind of pulsing with like flashes in the background there was zero kind of creativity that one with it was just this space needs filling. Mm, choose object and go. I know, yeah, there's still like gameplay to be done. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. All right, well, good luck, dude. Let's do it. Good luck, man. Usually a good starting point for design is to have a solid block that's going to differentiate it from the background. And it seems like Mr. Wilderman decided not to do that. And everything is layered weirdly and spaced weirdly and I can't get my head around it. <laughs> Dude, there's a lot of off-grid stuff here and I'm struggling to get it precise. It's not a bad design choice. I think it could work. It just needs to stop copying the background and start copying the object line right there. So it's pulsing alongside everything and that's making it a lot easier to work with already. I'm going to delete I these. I require assistance. What's up? I, all of a sudden I can't move anything. Oh, never mind. I just, I just got it. Okay. No, I, I, I see what I did. I, I tried to do like this absolute scaling hack thing so I could scale oh, further. Oh, okay. Maybe we'll do an extra like three yeah, minutes because I really like. Oh, you got stuck like hard. Sometime. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's fine. I just love that Eric unmuted and asked for assistance. Like he'd pooped his pants in like elementary school or something. Like I need help. <laughs> if I can make a cool arrow, I can take on the world. I need like a white, please. Number seven, group 30 group 31 we'll just make a couple of rows okay it looks really bad but i've got the arrow in it's using groups 30 to 41 which is 12 groups in total which is weird i'm totally just gonna toggle loop these with a half space in between okay so these are toggle on and they initially need to be toggled off and then they can toggle just like this after everything is done <laughs> i had to use a corner piece for the edge of the arrow but we're done. We're just going to link that together. Since they're kind of bitty, I can get away with rotating them a little bit, especially if I, like, make it obvious that I'm not supposed to have them in a straight line. Okay, so that's filling the space a little bit, making it look a slight bit cooler. The wave looks more full now. I'm going to add small white squares on top of the objects using some of these groups as well, probably starting with 33. We just need to fix the design a little bit, add something at the end instead of just regular blocks. Fix whatever this is. Hold on. Let me just quickly do this. So we'll copy the values of what they were and then get the black blocks back and just paste this state onto these objects. And we'll do the same for the top one. Just get rid of that and we shall paste again. I don't think I'm going to be able to make a design for the ending. I'm just going to have to use these white squares, I think. This level could have been so much better if I came more prepared for unconventional structuring. It's part of the reason that you'll probably never see me make an extreme because the type of structure in duty is just not for me. A big shiny looking object at the top just to connect it like that. Okay, that looks good to me. I'm just going to select the whole level and we shall set it to 42. Interesting. So 42 is going to move 100 blocks to the left in one second just at the end. Also, it can start off invisible, I think, and start to fade on. That's going to have to be the excuse for the beginning. There we go. It fades on and then we're into the action. Okay, perfect. I think I'm done. Man, <laughs> this level kind of sucks. I'm not going to lie. I just made the most cursed... <laughs> And oh, no. of all time. This level's probably better without it. It's absolutely oh, God. cursed. No, but that gives it more character, right? It gives it more charm. Oh, no. 
<laughs> it's so bad. Like, you got to make sure you look at the level and think, yep, that's an Eric Van Wilderman level. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that 100%. Yo. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had server problems right at the end of the video. So we've had to react to an MP4 of each other's levels. Our final results here. Okay, I'm watching Bold 6 right now. Let's go. Oh, did you change the font? I didn't do that. Oh, shoot. I did. Oops. Yo, that's, that that's actually good. That's good. Bold. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got like bacon lips. I tried to make him look like Baldy. I put the circles there and I was like, oh yeah, just normal circles. And I didn't realize they pulsed. And so he's it a pulsing funny. bald man at the end. Oh, dude, man. Yeah, the way you solidified the uh, the arrows at the end and you solidified the, uh, the wave part actually looks really cool. Yeah, I like that. How like you put like the black... So you, you like filled it with color, right? Yeah. And then the arrows at the end look really cool. Yeah, like how they're like phasing in and out kind of. I got to say though, that was, uh, it went a whole lot smoother than I thought. And that yeah. was really fun. So I was I'm really glad that. you invited me. Yeah, that was, uh, that was awesome. There's a couple parts like the very beginning that, you know, clearly still needed work. We I just, just made them invisible. <laughs> yeah but like <laughs> but man like there's some parts that look good like all my other forays into the editor literally i hadn't been in the editor in years right but like preparing a little bit and uh just learning some basics like pulses and movements uh made it it was fun something in this game that is almost completely untouched by me right um whereas i've done like as a player i've done so many it is like things, a right? whole half of the game that's just untapped yeah and i really uh just appreciate you in general and your content because there is like a huge void or there was until you came of fun and interesting content through the lens of a creator and it's just very bold for you to accept because as i said before we started recording like actual creators turned this down because they were too scared <laughs> it yeah. is really difficult isn't it like yeah it is it's, it's there's a lot intense. that can go wrong i had a, a, quite a few ideas before i got on and then like half of them just got cut off as soon as i saw what i got given it just so happens that like one thing leads to another you know the red and white design looked pretty slick and like you chose a cool song for it and so i thought like winter night and like it was weird how like as we bounced it back and forth like we kind of refined it. That was, yeah, that was it solid. Yeah, changing that was, that was the theme weird. almost, like when you put it in the winter. It has nothing to do with being bald, by the way, which is <laughs> interesting how it, that happened. But I think it's funny that you perceived your own player colors as the color scheme for the level. Like it just, it just switched like that. Yeah, I'm using orange and yellow as my icons. Okay. So the squares were orange and yellow. And then because they're play colors, you got it as red and white and then started making red and white. Just complete luck. Dude, I did not even connect those dots, man. I was like, oh, I was like, I think Woolsey's going for a red and white design because like that, that's my icon color. That's cool. It's literally just, it's the player one. <laughs> yeah, it's the player colors. Like you perceived your oh own player God. colors and then it became a good level because of it. Like, I didn't even, I didn't even <laughs> think about that. That's so funny. It's cool. Thank you everyone that's in the premiere right now and like watching and stuff. I really appreciate the support on the Level Swap series. Definitely go and check out Eric's perspective. I think it's going to be hilarious because A, he exceeded the expectations of what me and I'm guessing a lot of other people were thinking. And it's going to be funny watching him struggle with a couple of things like how he got scale locked and stuff. Trying to scale hack <laughs> things. Yeah. Check the links in the description. Leave a like and subscribe and... Have a good day. Peace. Bada bing, bada boom. Peace.